Hello, everybody. My name is Jan Denicke. I'm coming from Germany. Uh, 2-0. 2-0. Congratulations to you guys. That was awesome, I must say, really. Very good. Um, yeah, what are we talking about today? We are talking about Kodak One, the platform, and the Kodak Coin itself. Um, what are we doing? We are doing very simple things. We are doing IP protection. Intellectual, pro uh, intellectual property protection. So, um, IP protection is a field which is in the last years was on the last decade very difficult because the reason why we need IP protection is because the copyright holders, the content creators, they lost control of what is happening and that's actually the biggest topic what we're gonna solve with the Kodak One platform. So, how do you do that? Um, you have first, you have to bring in, um, you have to bring back the control to the copyright holders. You have to know what's happening to your content. You have to know where your images are going. You have to know which license has been done. What is an unlicensed usage? What is an, uh, what is a, uh, what is an infringement? So in doing that and bringing that information back to the copyright holder, you give back to the co creator control. And that, in the end, is restoring the value of your image. How are we doing this? So we, in the end, are doing, um, first of all, very important, is the registration of the ownership of an image. So if you shoot a photo uh, and you upload it to the internet without document that you are the owner, the image will be lost in the internet. So what we are doing, the, the ownership will be registered on the blockchain so that everybody knows that you are the owner of that image. Secondly, it's not only about the ownership of an image, it's also about where that image is going to go because you want to use the image. You want to license the image to different parties, obviously. So if you license an image, you might not use it anymore because the licensee is allowed to use it. So you need to document the lifetime circle of that whole image in the blockchain to have an idea what your image is, where your image is going to, and bringing back the control back to your to, uh, to, uh, to yourself as a copyright holder. So that is what we're going to do. We register, we document the, the ownership and the, and the uh, documentation of the lifetime circle of the image, image in the blockchain. Secondly, obviously, if you know where your image has been gone to, you also still need, there are still possibilities that the image can be stolen. So you need a very efficient crawler system to detect infringements within the internet. And that's what we established within the Kodak One platform it, itself. A third very important topic what we are doing is obviously we are talking about data. I mean, blockchain, that's a cool technology, obviously, but data, data is still king and it's a still a very important topic. So the whole platform is developed with a big data approach. So what we are doing, if images are going to be uploaded to our platform, we, d we extract every information we get out of the image. First of all, content-wise information. So what is on the image? Is there a person on? Is there a property on? Is there a brand on it? Whatsoever. All that information we're going to get out of the image and attach it to the image so that we, in the end, create more value about it. Secondly, what information do we also know, need? The most important information is the legal information attached to that image legal clearance. So if you look at a typical image right now, or at a typical image, there are different kind of uh, IPs, uh, intellectual properties on that image mostly. There might be a brand on, there might be a famous person on, there might be a property on, and whatsoever. And as long as you didn't, as long as you don't know who's, what is on your image, and as long as you don't have the rights clearance about that image, it's impossible for you to commercialize, to monetize that image. So you need to know what is on there and you need to clear these rights. And that's what we are doing also with the Kodak One platform. So we understand what's on the image, like content-wise, and we clear the rights within the image because we know what's on and we can go to the rights holders itself and get the clearance for our customers. Um, let us talk quickly about the Kodak uh, about the Kodak coin. Obviously, if we create it, if you document the whole lifetime circle of an image, what are you doing? It's nothing more than a very precise uh, royalty statement. 
So you know where you know uh, where the image has been licensed to in which territory. You know how often it has been licensed. You know the price. You know the duration, the time. So all that information makes it possible to create a overall accounting system with all, within all stakeholders. So therefore, obviously, it was a necessity or a necessary or logical step to um, to put a payment system beneath that accounting system with, uh, with, uh, with a cryptocurrency. Why a cryptocurrency? Because right now what we are having in a low margin, low margin uh, with a low margin product as an image, we have different kind of accounting system which don't speak to each other. We have different currencies which makes it very inefficient. We have long payout terms with the normal royalty systems and this is what we are changing. So if you have all stakeholders within that rights of chain and you know all the uh, uh, the, 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 the core license in it, then it's very easy for you if you pay it out in Kodak coins instantly to distribute the money within all, within all stakeholders. So it's a seamless payment system and it's very, uh, it's very efficient. And last but not least, once again, the instant payouts, it's for the copyright holder, one of the most important things. Nowadays, people are waiting 90 to 120 days until they get their payouts. So. I think this is what, we, what, what was a logical step for us to think about after we created that overall accounting system to basically underline it in the end with an efficient and seamless frictionless payment system. So the token economics, um, what are we doing right now? As you all know, we are a, a C Corp Delaware based in the US. We are, um, I myself, I'm a copyright, I was a copyright lawyer but right now I feel a little bit like a US security lawyer because we had a lot of talks with the SEC, we had a lot of talks with lawyers, but um, it's just my personal opinion. Um, regulation will come everywhere. So there, will, there won't be any country in the world that won't regulate whatever kind of fundraising and however you're gonna call it, security token, utility token, ICO, SAFT offerings, and whatsoever, it will be regulated. So that train has left the station a long time ago. So we thought ourselves, if that is the case, why not doing it straight from the beginning on and go a compliant way, 100% compliant way under the US security laws. And that's what we did with our offering. So we structured a SAFT, a simple agreement for a future token. Everybody knows that a SAFT is a SAFT. But a SAFT is not a SAFT. It depends on the SAFT, what's written in the SAFT. That's very important. I'll tell you why that is important. Because first, <clears throat> the SAFT itself might be a security. The issued coin afterwards might not. You have to think about that. The, the issued coin might not. The issued coin will be a utility token. And that's the reason that everybody says, like, why is that? Normally, every, the, the SEC says, like, every token is a security token. If you don't need the fundraising anymore to, um, if you don't need the fundraising anymore to develop the platform, then you obviously have the possibility to issue your token as a utility token. And we kept that possibility open in our SAFT. So that's why a SAFT is not a SAFT. Our SAFT is the best SAFT you can find. So, <clears throat> Um, a second thing, what is very important, if the token would be issued as a utility token, then obviously for us it was very important that we in the end decided that every usage on the platform, every transaction on the platform is triggering a coin, a Coda coin payment. It can be compared a little bit like a credit card transaction fee. So, and what does that mean? Um, it means in the end that you have a sustainable, that you have a sustainable, um, sorry, that you have a sustainable uh, demand on the code token and you can directly link the amount of the community within the platform, the amount of the images or digital assets or videos within the platform directly to the token. And that leads to the point that you have a sustainable demand on it because every transaction which is done on the digital asset, and not only the payment transaction, every tra if I change an image between you and me without paying it, that transaction costs you Coda coin. Obviously a very slow fee, but that in the end brings to you a very sustainable demand on the Coda coin. Secondly, what we did, 
we created a marketplace around that whole economy, about that image economy. So we decided to, uh, to, to give the, the community the possibility to buy uh, image-related products, like buying cameras, uh, purchasing uh, licenses, uh, booking models, and even booking flights or booking hotels over third service providers. So with these huge economy around it, we build another huge demand on the, on the token itself and obviously um, have a big possibility to bring what in. Our key strategic pillars. What are our key strategic pillars? Who are we targeting? So obviously, first of all, agencies, photographers, big agencies with a lot of amount of images, high transactions amounts. Secondly, Big markets, think about it. IP images, where is it? It's everywhere. Every brand, every celebrity, every, uh, every sports venue, they all have images. They have image archives. They're living it. It's their, it's their biggest assets they are having because they are trading it. They are living from it. So basically, obviously, sports and entertainment is for us a huge key pillar. Talent and personality rights huge key pillar. Archives, like, for example, Boston Globe Archive, uh, news agency archives, is a, a key pillar. It's what we are targeting with the Kodak One platform. In the end, technology partners. Let us talk a little bit about the technology partners. The technology partners integration is a very next step for us. So we are talking to the big uh, phone producers, giving us the possibility to help us to document the ownership of that image. So for example, if you take a photo with your camera and you know that you are the creator of that image, but if you give your camera over to, the, to your neighbor or to a friend and he takes a photo, it's on your camera, but you are not the creator of that image. So to basically uh, figure out who's the owner of it, we are talking uh, we are trying to establish relationships with um, technology partners that provide us with the, uh, with the possibility of uh, fingerprint or eye scanning solutions so that the link is directly, the, the, the digital asset, the image is directly linked to the, um, to the image. Um, by the end, in the end, obviously service providers are also key pillars. But let us talk the first, a little bit about the first major uh, key pillar which we are tackling right now, and I think we managed to do it very good. It's sports and entertainment. Why sports and entertainment? Because sports and entertainment has in the end, the, um, has in the end contact to every other key pillar. So what did we do? We, uh, we signed up recently uh, a great partnership with uh, six major NBA and NHL arenas, which also providing concerts and stuff like that. So what did we sign up? So we are the official cryptocurrency on these arenas. And secondly, we are the official um, image rights protection management platform for these arenas. So how does that work? What are we doing? Let me quickly tell you a little bit about how it's working right now. So you have a fan, he's going to a concert, you have all the badges at the wall, says like, no photos allowed, no photos allowed. What is the fan doing? Everybody knows the picture of a concert where all the, you look around and everywhere is an iPhone, they're taping videos, they're taking photos and whatsoever. So in the end, <clears throat> what is happening, he's doing it anyway, the fan. He's uploading it to his Instagrams, Facebook, Twitters, wherever, and the photos out there. So, the venues, the agents, the celebrities, the stars, the athletes, they don't have control of it. So what we offered them, we said like, if they're doing it anyway, engage them to do it. We help you, we help you to create, to commercialize it. Because the moment you know who's uploading it, who's the creator, then you can commercialize it. If you don't know it, then you can't, you don't have any control. So what are we doing is like we engage these arenas to, um, to tell their, their fans, take photos. And on top of it, we incentivize them for them. 
So we are giving them a different kind of incentivizes, like uh, we, we, we give them Kodak coins for the best picture of the game, or the best picture of the athlete, or the best fan picture, so that they uploading it to it. And with that Kodak coin he's getting, he in the next step can go and purchase a beer, purchase a sausage, purchase whatever, purchase a t-shirt, and also can purchase tickets, future tickets. So what do we have here? We have, we, we, we managed to find a solution where we in the end thousands of mil millions of millions unlicensed images bringing back to the copyright holder, to, 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 the, to, to the IP holder, make the rights clearance and give them the possibility to commercialize it. And on a second thing, on a second level, you have to think a little bit deeper. What is huge as well? What data are we collecting here? So we are collecting the data, first of all, what is the favorite player of that fan? Where is he going to? Okay, this is like the first step. But the second step, which, is, which might be much more interesting, we convert that image into a currency. And with that currency, you go directly to a place and buy products. So we have a full change of data points, which obviously our partners here, the venues, the leagues, you name it, are very, very interested in and don't have it right now. So that's why we started with the with the uh, Oakview Group, with the OBG deal, with the six arenas, and obviously uh, more to come. The second step, or the second great announcement we just did yesterday, I don't know if, uh, if, if somebody had the chance to read, to see it already. So we have, uh, I add quickly to the OBG arena, there are, for this t the OBG arena, it's, it's 10 billion, 10 million plus, uh, fans which are coming to the arena, and that brings huge tractions, obviously, to the platform, if you, if you just think about how many images that's going to be. Um, so, um, what did we do? We, uh, we, uh, we, we, we built up a big partnership with uh, the Formula One star, Fernando Alonso, and it's the same way what we are doing with OVG with the arenas. So, we encourage, we're going to be, we're going we gonna to protect his IP, but we are not aggressively uh, protecting it. We are protecting it and giving him back control to his image. What is it? I mean, the image rights of an athlete is like the most valuable thing he can have. And so we encourage the fans taking images and, um, and, 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 and so give the possibility to, to commercialize it. So that was a big announcement for us and it shows the right direction where we are going to. So the um, so the, 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 the overall saying within it is you only can protect IP if you have control. And that's what we want to offer everybody, every famous celebrity, every famous brand, every famous team, and especially the Korean team. That's the best one, I must say. Thank you so much.